Hello and welcome to IP Experts V Lecture on URI dialing. My name is Andy Vassar. I'm the CCI Collaboration Instructor here at IP Expert. And before I get into any of the topics or anything today, I want to first thank you for your participation. Looks like it's a great turnout. A lot of people that are eager to hear about URI dialing, I hope. Uh, so, uh, but before I get into anything, I want to make sure that you know that you can ask questions at any time. Uh, that chat window is there for those questions. So if, you, if you're in the dark about anything throughout the lecture, you don't understand something thoroughly, please feel free to ask a question. Uh, it doesn't bother me one bit, doesn't interrupt me at all. That's the point, is to, is to teach you throughout this process. So if you don't understand, please feel free to ask a question. Also, this is the online HD ILT interface. So you have other options besides the chat window available to you. You have the hands up, you have the thumbs up, you have the thumbs down, which we don't really like to see. I mean, I'd, I'd rather not get the thumbs down, personally. Uh, but we also have the smiley face, and we also have the hand clap. Those two are pretty cool. So if you want to throw those my way, I do not object at all. So without further ado, let's actually talk about what URI dialing is. What is URI dialing? What is a directory URI? How do we actually call um, using a directory URI? So first of all, let's define the term URI. First of all, it's a, it's a uniform resource identifier. That doesn't tell you anything about what it does or what it is, or it it's just defines the term. So a URI looks exactly like an email address. It's formatted the exact same way. You have a user portion, you have a domain portion, which are separated by an at symbol. So for example, my email address, avassar at ipexpert.com, so I have the user portion, avassar, and the domain portion, ipexpert.com. You can also replace that, just as with an email address, with an IP address if you don't have DNS in your environment. So in Communications Manager, these directory URIs are used, you know, you can make calls between, each, between phones using the directory URI. But what they do is they're actually aliased to directory numbers themselves. So if you have a directory number in your system, you can create an alias to that directory number with a directory URI. Our topology today is going to be at the headquarters site. We're going to have two phones that we're working with. So the first phone is going to be extension 2001, and that's going to be HQ phone 1. And the second extension is going to be 2002, HQ phone 2. Those are the only extensions that, are going to be, that we're going to be working with today. And we're going to configure URI dialing between those two phones. So without further ado, let's actually get into some of the configuration there. As you can see, right now we're on the device page, which lists you know, the phones, which you should be intimately familiar with at this point. If you're not, that's all right. Um, you're going to see a couple things that we can pretty much ignore for right now. The first is the UCCX call control group. That is basically you know, done for other configurations that I have going on. We have the CSF configurations, which are for um, Jabber clients. And then uh, we have the phone view thing here, which is pretty interesting. Um, that, I'm going to show you a little bit more about that software. Phone view is actually a software by Unified FX that can show you the screen of the phone and allow you to interact with it, which I'm going to show here today in the presentation so you can actually get an idea of what we're doing on the phone. That way it can make it a little bit easier for you. So, and then if you scroll down a little bit more, you can see the phones that we're actually going to be working with today. Uh, we have HQ Phone 1 and HQ Phone 2. So let's get into the, uh, the device configuration page of HQ Phone 1. So if we click that, uh, we see that we have the internal partition assigned to our first directory number, 2001. So you know, just a, a quick little thought about partitions and calling search spaces. It's, it's not necessary to actually define a partition in the system. For anything, I mean, you can you can have the parti uh, the system completely wide open in the none partition, and and you can anybody can call anybody essentially is what that means. But if I have a directory number that's in a partition, like the internal partition, that means that access is restricted to that number. If you're not familiar with this already, you probably should be. Uh, <laughs> so why I'm bringing this up is because some instructors are actually going to tell you you know what, you really don't need partitions and calling search spaces. There's, there's no reason to configure that. But what I'm telling you is that there probably is a good reason to do that. I mean, if, if you want to control access to anything in your system, you need calling search spaces and partitions. So use a partition. Use a partition for your lines, anything else that you need in the system. So 
So right now, that's why I have uh, this line one in the internal partition. So it's 2001 in the internal partition. Let's click on that. And let's go ahead and look at the directory URI section. The directory URI section, you can see right here at the bottom of the screen. And it is actually uh, highlighted right now as the primary directory URI because when you create one, it's going to be primary by default. So you can, you can enter a URI here in this URI field. Uh, like I said, that's formatted like an email address. And you can also enter a partition in this, or select a partition rather, in the system there. And obviously that can be any partition that you have in the system. So how do we actually create a URI? Well, it's pretty simple. You just type it. Um, so let's, let's create a URI called ccie1 at ipexpert.com. If I could spell it, it'd be a lot better. So that's our directory, directory URI assigned to directory number 2001, ccie1 at ipexpert.com. And if you just heard my little mini rant about partitions, then you probably want to put a partition here. Uh, you can leave it as the none partition, but in my configuration right now, since I, I have a CSS assigned to the phone and, and there are partitions elsewhere configured in the system, if I don't configure a partition, partition here, I won't be able to dial the directory URI. So I need one in my configuration. So let's go ahead and select the internal partition because that's the one we have for directory numbers. It makes it, things a lot easier. So we have cci1 at ipexpert.com. We now have that assigned at the line level to directory number 2001. So let's go ahead and save that configuration and reset. And you'll see uh, two, you know, two devices selected there, which is okay. Um, normally you'll just see one, but I have a Jabber client associated with this as well. So we can ignore that for now. That's just a test configuration. All right, so while that phone is resetting, Let's look at the other phone. We have the, we have the other phone in the system here, HQ Phone 2. Now, you might be asking right now, are you? Okay, no questions yet. <laughs> but you might be asking yourself, how do I actually dial this directory number? How, I mean, how do I dial the directory URI? I can't type the email address into my phone, so how do I actually go about doing that? Well, you can do it with the Jabber client. You can actually type a directory URI into the Jabber client and call that way. But with Communications Manager and the phones itself, you have to create a speed dial. So on phone two, let's create a speed dial to phone one for the URI that we just created. So let's do that with button three, because it's the top button there. Click on the speed dial and we have number, label, and ASCII label. The number normally is reserved for the phone number, of course, or the directory number or whatever other line, but now you can actually put your URI in this number location. So what do we use? CCIE1 at ipexpert, exert, ipexpert.com. Let's copy that to make our lives a little easier. All right, so now save that up, hit the close button, and now we have, when it refreshes, we have our brand new speed dial here, CCI1 at ipexpert.com. So let's go ahead on the 9971 and reset this guy now that we have that configured. And now is probably a good time to show you the unified FX phone view software um, to view these phones. I mean, we have, we have a line configured we have a directory URI configured, rather, on the line, cci1 at ipexpert.com on 2001. So let's pull up that phone in Unified FX Phone View and actually take a look at it. So as you can see right here, we have a nice, rich interface. You have the 7965 um, on, the, on the left side of the screen here, and you have the 9971 on the right side of the screen. The 9971, you're going to notice, refreshes a little bit slower than the 7965 just because it has... It's one of the newer phones. It has a lot more features, that type of thing. Um, it's not something that Unified FX has anything to do with. It's a Cisco limitation. So there's a little bit of a delay in the refresh of that phone. So like I said, we have the directory URI configured on phone one, which is now highlighted. Um, a couple things about this software. First of all, you can take a screenshot right here, 
which means that that's just going to refresh the screen for you and get the latest image from that screen. Or you can right click on the screen and take automatic screenshots, which is nice because then you can actually, you know, see the phone refresh almost as normal. It's going to take a screenshot as often as it can to show you the latest information on that screen. So let's select the automatic screenshot on both of these guys. And that way we can see the latest information. So, and the phones are actually, for me, on this side of the screen. So if I look at them, I can see exactly what's going on right now. So, um, and you can see there, it, it actually refreshed the screen. We have CCI1 at IPExpert.com for the, for the speed dial that we just configured on HQ Phone 2. HQ Phone 1 actually has that number, but you don't see anything on the page at all. You, see, you only see 2001. Like I said, it's not going to show up on the phone at all. It's just an alias for that number. So this 9971 phone, if you want to actually dial uh, you know, this URI, CCI1 at IPExpert.com, just hit the speed, the speed dial button like normal. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on the physical phone right next to me, and we'll see it ring in on the 7960 phone, 7965 phone right here on Unified FX Phone View. So that's ringing in right now, and I'll show you the capabilities of the software here. We can actually answer it on Phone View. So I click the Answer button, and when it refreshes here, you'll see that the call is active. So now we have a call from HQ Phone 1 to HQ Phone 2 using the directory URI, but you'll notice that it just shows up as 2001 and 2002. There's no mention of a directory URI anywhere, and that's because it's only an alias. Just remember that. It's only an alias. So um, the next thing we want to look at here, now that the call is active and we know that we're able to use a directory URI to call, is we, we probably want to put a directory URI on phone 2 as well to take advantage of that. So from Unified FX Phone View, we, we can actually end the call. I'm going to do that on the 9971 so you can see what you need to do. This is the 79XX keypad, and you just change it now to the 8999XX keypad. And that will refresh for you. And all you have to do to end the call is hit that soft key corresponding to it, and you see that that call will end. Um, well, it'll show up here in a second. It ended over here on the physical phone already. Um, and like I said, the 7965 refreshes a little bit quicker than the 9971. You can see that right here. And all right, so it's all refreshed now. We have our speed dial on HQ Phone 2. Now let's configure a URI on HQ Phone 2 as well. There's actually another way to, to configure a URI. It's not only through the directory number configuration page. You can also do it through the end user configuration page, which might actually be more useful to you because you're going to have end users anyway. You're going to be creating end users for, uh, for Unified uh, or UCCX. You're going to be creating them for Jabber, um, for, uh, for anything else, in the, for Unity Connection, possibly. Uh, there's a lot of different ra reasons you might create an end user. So you might have an end user configuration anyway, so this is going to be a lot easier for you. So if I want to create a directory URI on HQ Phone 2. Like I already showed you, we can go through the line page, but let's go through uh, the user management page and check out the end user. I've been nice enough to create the end users already for us here to save us some time and make your life a little easier. So let's click on HQ Phone 2 and that's going to pull up obviously the end user page. And we see normally you know you have the user ID, you have the last name, you have the first name, you have the tef telephone number, but now we have a field called directory URI, as you can see right there. So in this field, if we enter, let's say, ccie2 at ipexpert.com, now we have our directory, directory URI configured. That's all there is to it to configure the directory URI, but there's one important step that you know, if you miss it, it's just not going to work correctly. And anybody know what that is? That's right, we have, um, yeah, okay. So we have the, the uh, a user here has, has commented and said that we have, uh, we have to create a phone association on the end user page. So that's correct, I appreciate the, the feedback there. Um, so what we have to do 
to create a phone association is put your phone that you're interested in controlling and the control devices there and also associate a line. We have a primary extension 2002 on that phone and you need to have a primary extension associated with your end user in order for this to work because where else would it go? I mean, you think about it, you configure a directory URI on an end user and it doesn't have a primary extension, the directory URI can't go anywhere. It doesn't know where to go. So the configuration won't work. So just to review, we have our CCIE, <laughs> CCIE2 is what I meant to put. That's why we review these things, you know. CCIE2 at ipexpert.com. And you can see under it, we have the telephone number 2002 which is not necessary for this configuration, but it's useful to be there. CCI2 at ipexpert.com. You have the primary extension associated with that end user. And now we can save this configuration. Now if we go into device phone and pull up HQ phone 2, and then pull up the line that's associated with HQ Phone 2. Let's scroll down to the directory URI, and now we can see that there is CCI2 at ipexpert.com under the directory URI section associated now with this 2002 line. Also, the biggest part of this that you have to notice is the partition that's associated with this number. It's a partition called directory URI, directory space URI even. Um, so you can't even change that partition. What's, what's up with that? I mean, we can't even make this a different partition if we wanted to. It's automatically associated with the directory URI. You can't change it at all. So if you don't have directory URI in your CSS, you will not be able to dial this number. There is one exception to that rule, though, which I'll talk about in a minute. But I want to make sure that this partition is actually available for, for us to add to a CSS. So if we go to classic control, calling search space, and look at the CSS associated with our phone, which is aptly named phone CSS, <laughs> um, let's pull that up. And we see internal in there. We have a couple other partitions in there. But we want to be able to associate directory URI. And it looks like, lo and behold, we can do that. Uh, the available partitions there, if we add directory URI to our CSS, we'll have access to dial it, of course. Um, so it looks like that's definitely a possible configuration for us. But another configuration that we can do uh, is actually through enterprise parameters. So let's go ahead and pull up enterprise parameters and have a look at that. You can actually create an alias to the directory URI partition. So it's almost saying that direct, the directory URI partition equals this partition. And that's done with the service parameter called directory URI alias partition. As you can see here, I already have it configured for us for the internal partition. And like I said, what that does, the directory space URI partition, that's the fault in the system, is now going to be the same as internal partition. So you don't have to edit any CSSs. You don't have to go in, I mean, especially if you have hundreds of these, not in the CCIE lab exam, but if you have them you know, in production environment somewhere, you can just very quickly create a directory URI alias partition and solve a lot of problems at once. So we have the internal partition here assigned to the directory URI alias. Now we have our, our directory URIs configured on the phones. One thing that we don't have is the speed dial on HQ phone 1 back to HQ phone 2. Let's go ahead and add that right now. You already really know how to do this. All right, so we add the speed dial there. And let's close that. And take a look over here to see if that actually updates the phone. And it looks like it has. All right, let me pull, let me pull up phone view so you can see what this looks like now. And so we have our speed dial here, CCIE2 at ipexpert.com and CCIE1 at ipexpert.com. So, like I had mentioned before, on the 7965, when you create a URI, it does not show up on the phone. So we have no way of telling that it's there, you know, unless you look at the configuration itself. So now, let's try to call 
CCI2 at IPExpert.com from the 7965. Let's go ahead and do it from phone view. Let's change the keypad. And you can see that this is the third button. Remember, we configured the third button. So one, two, three. We'll hit that speed dial. And you can hear it ringing. Let's go ahead and answer that from the, change the keypad, and answer that. So as you can see, we answered it from the phone view, and now the call is active. So when this uh, 9971 refreshes, that is, and it takes a minute. So we have the 7965 that shows that the call is active now for 13 seconds or so. And once again, it does not show a URI at all. It just shows the directory number. That's basically it. So just to review, we have a couple directory numbers that are configured here in the system. We have two URIs now associated with each directory number, and we're able to successfully make calls between them. Um, you can actually go and, and look and, and see the codec and everything, and you know it's just a normal call. So there's nothing different about it. It's just the alias to get to that point where you can make the call. So it looks like I have a, uh, a question here. Um, how many characters are in a direct directory URI limit? So is there a limit on directory URI characters? Let's go ahead and have a look at that, actually. Um, now, this, this is actually a really good uh, preparation for the CCIE lab exam itself because you're going to want to get intimately familiar with the documentation CD or university or the Cisco documentation online and navigating your way through that. Um, because if you don't know how to do that, you're pretty much on your own in the lab without any documentation. So let's open a new tab here. Go to my handy dandy Cisco documentation link. And let's see here. We probably want to go to Unified Communications. Let's go to Call Control. Unified Communications Manager. And we'll use version 9.1 here. So let's scroll down. The question is, again, how many characters are in a directory URI? So let's have a look and see where that is. It's probably in the system guide. Let's have a look here and see. Dial plan architecture. All right, URI dialing is here in these, uh, the call manager system guide. So, director URI format, perfect. All right, let's scroll over so this can be seen a little bit easier. All right, it says that, uh, how many characters are in director URI is, is what the question is. So right now, it says that the director URI limit is 254. So you have 254 characters in the directory URI. And that looks like that that is user and domain portion uh, totally. So, uh, once again, quick little foray into the documentation, uh, but definitely know how to get to this page or any other page while you're in, in the CCIA lab. Um, be intimately familiar with that documentation. So, great question. I appreciate that. Um, doesn't look like there's any other questions. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and close this V lecture out. I uh, really appreciate the attendance today again and, and your questions and your feedback. Uh, please stay tuned for the upcoming V-Lecture, which is going to be dialing, URI dialing between clusters. And that's going to be using the ILS service, intercluster lookup service. So I definitely appreciate your participation today. Thanks for choosing IP Expert, and we'll see you soon.